Systems Network architecture. Time and technology have brought about change, and our ways of communicating have become more complex. We've moved from chatting around cracker barrels to communicating via telephones and switchboards and into the world of computers. At first, all computer action pivoted around its central processing unit, the CPU. But today, computer power is spreading out and computers are communicating and exchanging information with each other and with people via online terminals. From central banks to branches, from offices to warehouses, from counters to stockrooms. To handle the growing traffic, communications facilities expanded into network, transmitting data via telephone lines into broadband cables, microwaves, and satellites from city to city and around the world. What evolved in data processing was a multiplicity of terminals, access methods, and line control disciplines, and an increasingly complex communications environment that greatly complicated new application development. The result? Total system costs that were higher than they had to be, and system effectiveness that was lower than it should be. What was needed was a comprehensive communications capability to facilitate network evolution and application growth. And now IBM has it. Systems Network Architecture. A unified structure of hardware and software allows application programs and a new family of terminals to share network resources efficiently. It distributes network functions to appropriate elements of the system and permits the user to concentrate on application development instead of the details of line protocol and device management. The new architecture also incorporates an efficient discipline, transparent to the user, for moving data through a network. Again, allowing the user to concentrate on applications rather than communications. Before we see how advanced function for communications helps to improve system productivity, let's take a look at a current approach. A user terminal, perhaps a keyboard printer, is linked via a communication line and a multiplexer to a host computer. An operator prepares an inquiry from a terminal to an application program. Before transmission to the host, device control and line control are appended. The message then flows to the host, where it's checked for accuracy and validity. Here, the application program processes the data and sends a response to the terminal, where it's printed. Note that only one message at a time can flow through the network, either from terminal to host or from host to terminal. Let's assume now, as happens rather frequently, that a second printer of a different type, a line printer, for example, has been installed in the same general location for the same user application. Frequently, the two types of terminals will require different controls, so that separate communication lines must be installed and the application program modified. The action is the same as before, except that messages flow independently from both terminals to the host and back through their own communication line. But since there are now two lines, line costs are up and with a bigger, more complex application program, programming costs are also up. In multiple applications, it's the same thing. More lines and more terminals, since terminals assigned to one application cannot be used for another, and costs go up further. And finally, as a communications network grows more complex, the possibility of a breakdown grows with it. If a single communication line goes down, the affected terminals become essentially useless. If the multiplexer or the host goes down, all terminals become unavailable. Manual backup or duplication of facilities offer a solution, but once again, costs go up. In this kind of environment, users find it difficult to install applications, to take advantage of new terminals, or to speed application development. It's either too complex or too expensive. 
That's where IBM's systems network architecture comes in. In the new design, device control is common across various terminals, which reduces application program responsibilities and helps to lower programming costs. Line control is now processed in the communications controller, thus freeing the CPU for other tasks. Other advantages of the new system become apparent when two different terminal types are installed for the same application. Since the controls are now the same, and control actions are now handled in the same way, line costs can be minimized by multi-dropping the two terminals from the same communication line. Adding applications does not necessarily mean adding line costs, since lines are no longer assigned by application. Nor does it necessarily mean adding terminal costs, since the same terminal can be used for multiple applications. The new line discipline also permits messages to flow over a common line from one terminal to the CPU, at the same time that return messages are being sent to another terminal, a more efficient use of communication facilities. A key concept in systems network architecture is the distribution of network function, made possible by large-scale integration. LSI shrinks logic element to such an incredibly small size that there's room for a variety of functions in just about every terminal and controller. In this example, a programmable controller with devices attached is controlling and processing messages locally when the host CPU is not required. This saves time needed to send transactions to the host and by helping to lower network traffic, frees the host to handle more terminals and perform additional functions. When normal message flow to the host is interrupted because of a line break or other failure, Distributed function helps keep more terminals available by allowing the programmable controller to go into offline operation. Messages destined to the CPU are now provided with a different header that routes them to disk storage for later transmission to the host. When normal operation resumes, the application program can use the advanced function features of systems network architecture to retrieve the data that was stored during offline operation. Here's how everything we've been talking about looks when you put it all together. An interactive user logs on an inquiry program and message exchange begins. Another user signs on and requests batch output stored in the host. As print lines start flowing and the interactive traffic continues, data entry operators communicating with a local edit program operate concurrently with local database inquiries or even updates which cause verification messages to be sent to the host. In this relatively simple example, four applications are communicating with four different terminal types simultaneously over the same line without requiring changes in the application program. Even when malfunctions occur, parts of the system can continue functioning. And when service is restored, application programs can resume operation using advanced function capabilities. Systems network architecture then provides a uniform structure for planning and implementing teleprocessing applications through a new family of terminals and makes possible simpler application programs with fewer device control responsibilities and dependencies, allowing freedom to concentrate on application development. Fewer lines because different terminal types can share lines, applications can share lines, and messages can flow in both directions simultaneously. Fewer terminals, because terminals are not dedicated to applications, and terminals on any line can talk to multiple applications. Distributed network function, which frees the host CPU to handle more applications and more terminals, and allows all elements of the system to perform more efficiently. Improved terminal availability 
because distributed function permits local message processing to continue when host outages occur. All of these advantages can lead to increased system productivity because it's now possible to assemble a wide-ranging combination of solutions in one open-ended communications system. Advanced function for communications through IBM's systems network architecture. Computers and people communicating better wherever they are. Thank you.